everybody and welcome to the Logan Power Show. Well, it's me, your host, Calvin Logan. I know a lot of you are going through some tough times and I know that um, you're trying to find the right answers. I pray that God is protecting you, watching over you, he's elevating you. Um, I pray things change and I pray that um, through these tri this trials and tribulations that you're facing and facing across the nation, that we keep our faith strong and that we know that God will get us through this. And uh, I got a good friend with me. He came all the way travel to come and spend time with me and talk about his book. And uh, he's got some things going on. Uh, <laughs> he's a good friend of ours here at the Logan Power Show. Uh, he's the one only, Mr. Kevin Thornton. How you doing, sir? Good, brother. How are you? Good to have you here. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we got his book here, uh, 20 Beautiful Men. Uh, Mr. Kevin Thornton, he's a life coach. He's an architect. Um, as we said, the wellness architect is what his actual business. Um, he does have also his own show uh, on Manifest TV every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's about two hours um, live on Facebook Live on Manifest TV. So definitely something you want to check out. So, Mr. Thornton. Yes, sir. It's good to have you here. Thank you, first. I, you know, we've been trying to do this for... Uh, a while now, now we finally got it done. Yes, sir. I'm yes, excited. sir. Now your bestseller book, um, Twenty Beautiful Men. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about this book that's, that people are pulling off the shelves. Uh, Twenty Beautiful Men is like it's a piggyback off of like uh, Super the Super the Soul, where I had ninety other guys do short stories about their lives. Um, my whole intent was to showcase black men and men in general um, to show the world that we are different from what that we see on TV. Um, a lot of times they see on TV, it's very negative about how they show black men and it's more black men like you and I than what they see on TV. And this is the opportunity and the platform to showcase these men doing great things. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, for when we think about that, um, why is it so, such a need to have something like this in our in our actual in our Rolodex? Why should we be reading this type of book now in this season? Because in, in this in this season right now, we need everything is going doom and gloom. Uh, we need the inspiration, we need the motivation, and the different stories tell people how they may hit rock bottom, but then they re, they was re, they had redemption, and they bounce back up from maybe being homeless to now doing great things. So wherever you at right now is a story for you that can um, resonate to your spirit. Amen, amen. Definitely something to resonate to your spirit. Now, you are a life coach. Mm -hmm. You and, and you talk about wellness, about mm -hmm. getting uh, us healthy. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, he has a lot of great testimonies of how people um, lost weight, got their, it's not just, as you would say, man, I just lost 20 pounds, 30, 40 pounds, but it's more like I got my life back in order. Mm -hmm. If it could have been like, I need to take a rest break. I need to um, to figure out what uh, what's in my life that's sort of sort of setting me back. Right. Um, what what decided you to make say I'm gonna become a life coach? I want to get involved in my own business to help others. Good question. So um, I got coached first. I got <laughs> coached first. I got coached by. 11 years ago, I got coached by Yama Van Zandt and her team. Uh, one day, I was getting ready to do a, a boot camp, and I was sitting in my car, and she was on a Michael Basin show, and she said that the spirit led her to do a free nine-week coaching session for the first 100 black men that emailed her. And I did it, and she ended up having like 125 men do it, and I did the whole nine weeks. And in that journey is when I realized what I wanted to be. Um, it, and I knew eventually part of my my ministry would be black men because during that whole process I saw how hurt and broken the black men were and if we don't really have a space for them you know we don't do a lot of different things for them we do a lot for the women okay. but we don't do a lot for the men and we don't have a safe space for them that they can feel you know, comfortable and not feel judged or look as being weak because they're crying or they feel some kind of way. And what I learned was what I was going through with, with my issue was minor 
compared to the majority. So the top two issues that the black men was going through was abandonment issues, mm. you know, not feeling worthy or being or loved because the father wasn't there. Mm. Um, and the second one is molestation. Wow. Um, a lot of men have been molested. Um, and they also lost trust because like in one situation, a guy got molested by his mom's boyfriend. Um, he told his mom what happened and she chose the boyfriend over her, his, her son. So he felt like, nah, he's not really safe. That, you know, and in this time of need, he couldn't even rely on his own mom to protect him. So all that stems to how a lot of these men, why they act the way they act. Mm, wow. So let's look at this, there's two epidemics, you know, we got going on. You know, we talk about diseases, things that's going on in the nation, but um, I wanna let people know, stuff ain't gone nowhere. Cancer is still here, mm-hmm. hasn't gone nowhere. AIDS, HIV, depression, suicide, those type of things have not gone and they haven't fall off the market. Um, they still here, but we're focusing on the, the two top things, African-American males that we're finding out abandonment issues um, and molestation. You know, we talk about how the females are getting molested, but we talk about a male. Mm-hmm. And let's be truthful, when a male has been violated, you lose, something is lost there. Mm-hmm. You see a lot when a male is lost, they lost, they, they lost their strength. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been taken advantage of. Yep. Um, it's, it's not like you lost in a fight and someone beat you up and you know you got beat or you lost in a basketball game you're crying. It's the innocence that, that you're taking from them, that you're hurt, not just physically, but spiritually. Mm-hmm. And that is something you see a lot. Um, and you see a lot in schools too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you can see it. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you be in a, you be in a school system a lot and you see how certain a boy will react when a male comes in the in the in the fold than when a female will react. Those mm-hmm. type of things are very uh, it's a it's a very nerve wracking situation. That's where you have to be very cognitive of what's going on. And, but, and what's funny is that you know when it comes down to the abandonment situation, a lot of times you know women would say, well, you know I haven't had my father either, so you just need to man up. It's different. Yeah, the father is a big part of their life too because they teach that's the first person you fall in love with. So I don't take that for granted. However, the girl do have a mother and the mother teaches them how to be a woman. Mm. The father is supposed to be the one who teaches the man how to be a man. So if he's not present, he doesn't know how to be a man. Amen. So then if he's not, they've never been taught, the women can't get mad at these men when they don't know how to act and be like a man because they've never been taught. So you can't have it both ways. You know, you want the man to be a man, but if the man has not been taught, he's never even seen a, a man, a male figure, then he don't know how to be or act, so. Absolutely, like if you look right now, the, the pivotal age for any child, you'll see the transition, I would say between three to five and that type of gap, you see two, a different type of transition. They talk about terrible twos, but when you get outside the terrible two, the identity uh, comes into place, three, mm-hmm four, five, the child starts identifying themselves with who they are. So if if there is no male, if I don't know what a male is, then what will happen is we, we do miss it. Mm-hmm. But what I want you all to understand this, we're gonna be getting really deep in what's going on. We'll be right back at this quick commercial break. <laughs> live back at the Logan Power Show here at For Your Glory International Ministries and I'm excited for what God is getting ready to do. 
And I'm again back with my host, what well, my special guest, Mr. Kevin Thornton. Uh, we were just talking about a little bit into the book, uh, 20 Beautiful Men. We were talking about what two top things that African American males that we found out what's going on. Um, abandonment issues was one. And then number two was molestation. Um, and for abandonment, you know, and you were hitting on a very good point is that if, if it's an all female house, mm -hmm. you can't, there's not a male there, yeah. it's gonna be kind of hard for you to it's, really it's, get it it's going. It's funny because the, the newer generation, the, the younger generation, a lot of the men are raised by women. And so then you get my generation, older generations, we always wanna say, is this the feminization of the black man? Well, it's because that's all they see. And so I, I was a member of the 100 black men, so our motto was what you see is what you be. So then therefore, you're gonna imitate what you see. So if there's no man present for them to imitate, emulate, they gonna emulate what they see, which is the women. So then that's not their fault. And it's not that the women are doing this to them. It's because a lot of times, regardless of the reason why the men are not present. So then therefore, they gonna even be what they see, which is the women. Absolutely. And we can change that. Yeah. Um, this is the thing. We know there's problems. Everybody knows there's a problem. But let's come with solutions. Yeah. We always talk about there's a problem. There's a problem in this world right now. Okay? We talk about COVID-19. All right, cool. Let's come with a solution. Let's find a cure. Let's find a vaccination. We talk about cancer. Hey, let's find a cure for that. My thing is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My thing is this. You know, we all say that we are Christians or whatever you walk by your faith is. If that's the case, we all supposed to be servant leaders. And so therefore, even if we keep on saying, well, this is the feminization of the black man, if you don't like what you're being, what you're seeing, then you can be part of the solution. And each of us, us can, you know, take a young man and be that positive image for them so they can say they saw a good image of a black man. So if you're not going to do that, you know, you're just part of the problem, not part of the solution. Absolutely. And the other thing, too, is that you need to be part, you need to get into the game. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You can't say, I'm, I'm just me and my household, and that's it. Right. You got to look, You the village has to start speaking for itself. Absolutely. And then, so what I'm making is, I'm making a clarion call to, you know, I know right now, I know who I am. I know I'm a believer, born again, blood walking, talking believer. But I know God made me this color, and I know this color is, is going through a tough time in this nation. Not in the globe, but in this nation. See, that's the thing. In this nation, I know we're having a tough time. And this particular skin color, I got to make sure that if I see someone who's who looks like me, um, who doesn't look, look at me, I talk about the Lord. But if I see someone who looks like me that I can lend a help, help a hand to, it may not get into your business. It could be right. like, hey... My son's playing basketball. My daughter's playing basketball. Hey, you want to come hoop with us? Right. Um, we ride the bike. Let's ride the bike together. That kind of stuff. Or like, hey, you playing a video game? Let's play it. You running? We running. Right. Um, those are the type of things and how you can get involved. We're not saying that you be the super cop. No one's saying, telling you to do that. But it's the little. It's the little things um, that can change a, a little one's life. I don't know about y'all, but it's just that if 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 you're a father and you take care of your son and you and your son go get a thing of ice cream and your son got a friend that father's not there and maybe his mom can't afford the ice cream and you decide I'm going to sacrifice and say, you know what, I'm going to get my son an ice cream plus I'm going to get his friend an ice cream. That could change that whole child's perception of Absolutely. how they're valued. Yeah. Um, but... For yourself, mm -hmm. you are a life coach, mm -hmm. and you get a lot of things brought to your plate. Yeah. Um, now, 2020 is different. This has got to be one of the most one of the most unique years I've seen in the, probably the past 10 years of yeah. my life. What are some of the strategies, or what are some things that you've been trying to talk to people to get them to be more positive and get over some of their trials and tribulations? Okay, well, good question. <laughs> First of all, what? How I feel about this is that I feel that everything's happening for a reason. It's, it's intentional. So instead of us looking at it from a, a negative perspective or what was me perspective, 
it's the opportunity for us to, each one of us, to figure out what we're supposed to learn at this moment, what we're supposed to do to, you know, create a change. Because let's say this, a lot of us work for a company. We're not, now we're not working for that company, for some of us. That company is probably somebody we didn't really want to work for anyway. But you might have the mindset that you know what, I want to create my own business. So then, therefore, you always had the job, you put a lot of time in the job, so you didn't have the time. Now he's creating time for you. So are you being productive with the time or are you just quarantining and chilling? You know, and so if that's the case, if you take if you take the opportunity he's giving you and look at it from a positive perspective, this is my chance to be productive and put my energy all into creating the brand I want to become. I can do that. Or if you're somebody who's been you know, working really hard and you don't have the time for your family like you're supposed to, but now you're working from home a lot of times. So now you got more time to spend your family. Let's let's do that. You know, so it different for each person. So that's how I look at it. But I think I also tell them that if you live in a state of fear and negativity, that is going to lower your vibrations. This is also going to lower um, your uh, resistance level. So then, therefore, you lower your resistance because you stay in a state of fear. And then you're more susceptible of getting the virus. So, then, so it behooves you to stay positive and stay empowered and uplifted. Wow. Okay. Power, power connection will diffuse negative reinforcement coming into your body. What I, you know, what we talk about, you know, laughter. People say, if you laugh, if you laugh a lot, you're going to live long. I know my wife always tells me, I smile a lot. I always show all my teeth. And I've all, like I said, it, I said like this, there's some people who ain't got no teeth now. Okay, so some people can't smell their gum in for the rest of their life. So if the Lord bless me with teeth, I'm going to show all, all what I have. And, and I thank God for it. Because there's some people who missing the gap in the front. And there's some who, who got, you know, Got a whole type of dentures, caps, you know, got to get their whole root canal fixed, all that kind of craziness. So I'm like this. You got to laugh and be positive. I'm like, and the thing about what we have to understand, what he's trying to tell you is that if you're working from home, if you can figure out the rule of 72 or just 48, if you figure out how can I maximize my day mm -hmm. to its full potential yep. and give it its give it my all, then you can really be successful. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, I'm not saying that, oh my gosh, I'm making money every minute on minute. No, what I mean by maximizing is say an hour or so you exercise or whatever you do, however your routine is, um, you got a, a time for family, a time for work, a time to motivate yourself, a time to motivate somebody else. And in that 24 hour period, you can say, well, uh, I got my couple hours of sleep. If it's four, five, six, seven, or however you guys sleep. But at the other time, I made a difference, then you maximize, you maximize it. Mm -hmm. And it's also an opportunity to, He's challenging your faith as well. Um, he's challenging everybody's faith. You know, I on social media, I see people posting scriptures all day long, this and that. But now these same people posting scriptures all day long are like in a state of fear and hysteria. And fear and faith cannot coexist. So which one do you believe? You know, do you believe that he's gonna you know, pull us through? Or is this gonna be the end of all what you see? You know, so which one is it? And you know, you can't, you can't have both. So you're gonna be fearful, or you're gonna trust that, you know, God's gonna put us through. Which one is it? And if you're gonna trust God's gonna put us through, then you need to leave the fear out of your, your mindset. Amen. Fear and faith. Faith is what's gonna override it. The just shall live by faith, is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So if you, and then, Second Christians 5 verse 7, but we walk by faith, not by sight. So it's an action. If you live for this thing, you're going to die for this thing. If you say you love Jesus and you're going, if this is what you believe as a believer, then you're going to die believing this. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you are a believer, you're not going to be popular. That is, there's nothing in the Bible that says because I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because I do the Lord's will, then I'm going to be a popular person. 
I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. If you want to be popular, choose the world. If you're looking to be, have a lot of ton of friends, you may not have a lot of friends because everybody's not going to like what you believe in. But I'm just saying that positive people, if you stay positive all the time, the negative folks don't want to associate themselves not with you. All. But it's a good thing. Because your positivity is always going to counteract. You ever see a magnet? A magnet will have a negative and a positive and will come together. Because the positive reinforcement will always bring that together. Two negatives cannot coexist in the same atmosphere and make it work. Now, in mathematics, they'll say um, uh, neg uh, negative two times negative two, you know, that would be something different. But parentheses can change the actual outcome to be a positive. So we have to understand that there's always a, a change, energy, but it's got to be positive. So tell people, how can they get in contact with you, sir? They can contact me on Facebook at Kevin Thornton, also The Wellness Architect. Instagram is at The Wellness Architect. Um, you can email me at kevint211 at hotmail.com. And you can watch my show every Monday at uh, 7 p.m., The Wellness Architect Show on Manifest TV. Manifest TV. Now, final thing before you go, what made you want to do that? The Wellness Architect, start your own actual show on Mondays. You know, that was not my plan. <laughs> you know, a lot of times, you know, you got to go with what um, they are putting to you. Um, I was asked to be on a show on, on that station mm -hmm. as a life coach um, for a particular segment of the show. And I did it. They really liked it. Um, so the girl asked me to be a guest host on her show for a couple more times. And Monday is like Motivational Monday. So all the shows on Mondays is usually something that's going to be uplifting. It's going to help the spirit. And they said they needed somebody like me to do the show. So I thought about it. And I said, let's go ahead and do it. And three years strong. <laughs> well, hey, again, it's a pleasure. I appreciate you coming. It. And hey, for those right now, I pray right now that God keeps you covered. I pray right now that you understand this. Keep your heart right. Um, be careful what you eat. Um, be careful what you say. And sharpen iron with somebody else. It, if it's not just coming in contact with them physically, give them a phone call. Hey, see how they're doing. Um, we got to encourage one another. Because I tell you right now, encouragement is what's going to get us through. But trust and believe. God got you covered. That's all the time I got. My name is Calvin of the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. We love you. We'll see you soon. Music's gonna bless you. They are the ones and only the young visionary.